Okay, so let's say you've mastered all the rudiments of basic filmmaking and you know, you're really on top of your technique. If you have no creativity, it's really no good to you. You're little more than a robot or a program. You need to have that soul, that spark, that kind of divine creative impulse of creativity. Creativity isn't something that we acquire. It's something like, like um, oh, if I have such and such a, an image, I'll be more creative. Or if I have such and such a job or such and such a title, I'll be perceived as, such, uh, as a more creative person. It's not a lifestyle asset. Creativity is actually fundamentally a crucial part of who we are. Now, I don't want to go too super woo and a little bit new agey here, nor am I being religious, but I simply want to make a point by referring back to some of the uh, most sacred traditions, most ancient traditions and most ancient insights into the nature of human beings. And in the book of Genesis, we have that verse that says, and the creator made man, made man, woman, mankind in uh, his own image. The very, very foundational myths of culture, the foundational stories that tell us about our relationship to life, the universe and everything, and are the kernel of who we really truly are, says that we're fundamentally creative. And there's other verses in the New Testament, I believe, where the Apostle Paul talks about being co-creators with Christ. Okay, so essentially, at least in the Judeo-Christian tradition, we're seen as fundamentally creative children of the divine creator. That's part of who we are, right in our soul, is creative spark. I think, to the best of my awareness, you know, this is a principle within Buddhism as well, that what we create in, our, in the inside through our thoughts and feelings um, is reflected in the world outside, that we mirror. Now, um, you know, if you're interested in books like The Secret or some of the New Age Insights, you'll also find this principle that, you know, we're inherently creative and that the vibration that we give out and the things that we think, say and do manifest in the world around us and are returned to us. In other words, what we give out, we get back. This is not about spirituality. This is not about religion. What it is about is saying, look, here are many, many different traditions that go back over thousands of years that all fundamentally reinforce the point that we are inherently creative. So rest assured, you are a creative person. That's your nature. The, the exercises that we do together are not to become creative, it's to polish up and to enhance and to flex your innate creative muscle. It's something you already have, it's something that you already are. Okay, so ways to enhance our creativity. Number one is to be in a very positive, relaxed mental and physical state. Now, that's often very much easier said than done, particularly uh, under the rigors of film production. So what are some of the basic, practical, common sense things that we can do here? Well, th these are things that you're going to be kind of like going, well, duh, but they're absolutely vital. How we manage our physical and mental states are crucial to our well-being. And so basic things like just making sure that we've had enough sleep, getting proper sleep, getting proper rest, proper refreshment, um, having a diet that's actually nurturing and uh, nourishing our body and mind rather than just one that's crippling it is very, very important. And uh, in no way is this medical, um, I'm in no way qualified to give medical information or anything like it, but we're all aware that, you know, we could, um, if we cut down on sugars and fizzy drinks and alcohol and coffee and some of those more acidic uh, lifestyle um, foods and drinks and tend to favor more fresh raw organic plants in our diet that's broadly speaking a good thing keeping ourselves hydrated is really important as well because the body and mind function much more effectively when we're properly hydrated and it's just basic maths if we're 75 or 80 percent water or whatever it is it's really, really crucial that we're well hydrated, then we start to function effectively. When we function effectively, we feel good. When we feel good, we're energized. When we feel good and we're energized, we're creative because that's part of our actual nature. Another key foundation to improving your creativity, directly linked to that thing of being able to enhance positive states, is to exercise. Movement is medicine. Movement is medicine. Now, 
Why is that? Why is it important? Because the body is designed through evolution or creation or whatever your outlook is, the body is designed to move. It needs to move. Sitting hunched over a computer like 60 hours a week is unnatural to the body and it's counterproductive. The, the spine uh, and the lungs are turned in so we're not breathing properly, we're not oxygenating ourselves properly, we're not moving around the way we're designed to, we're not hunting, gathering, we're sitting in front of electronic flickering screens, perhaps under fluorescent lighting, perhaps in overheated rooms with recycled air, and it's no wonder that we often feel stale, listless, have sore heads and are lacking energy. And in that state, nobody is going to feel creative and vital. So moving your body in whatever way, you know, really floats your boat is the way ahead. If it means getting out for a walk, do it. If it means going for a jog, if it means calisthenics, swimming, dancing, boogieing, whatever your thing is, get out and do it. And ideally do it in nature. When we're out in nature, we're we're connecting with the natural order, the natural frequency, the natural balance of life. We forget, especially when we live in cities, especially when we're engrossed in screens and gadgets, just how artificial our life often is. Now, Tony Robbins talks about this, it talks about being in the box. He says, we'll get up, wake up out of our box bed, sit in our box room, go downstairs to another box, open up a box, pour some stuff out of the box to get ourselves ready to go to work. We get into a box, travel to another box, sit in front of a box, uh, then come home <laughs> in another box, sit down in front of the box and maybe have a cylinder to change our state. Okay, we're boxed in. He's talking about this metaphor of, you know, the box for how uh, kind of contained and, and um, if you like, um, segregated our life is from nature. Just the act of observing nature the act of watching it, the act of seeing the relationships between things that don't seem to have any inherent um, relationship, but actually when you study them, everything's interconnected. Very, very important lessons. And if it was good enough for Leonardo da Vinci to sit in nature and study it and, and say that it was his greatest master, then it's certainly good enough for aspiring artists like you and myself to spend time in nature, to observe, to benefit from its beauty, to have our minds, bodies and spirits kind of nourished by being in nature and enhancing our creativity just by being connected to that innate, massive turning wheel of creativity and the cycles of life. A really good way to enhance your creativity is to become friends with failure. Really, failure is one of those guys who turns up at your house and you're never really that pleased to see him. You obviously don't want to make him a permanent residence in your home, but when he's there, past the time of day, you know, you're going to be acquainted whether you like it or not. So make that a positive relationship as best you can. Nobody likes to feel, nobody likes to be seen to feel. But if we reframe the concept of failure, and instead of making it a judgmental term and saying, well, I failed, I failed, I feel bad about myself, I feel bad about what I did, I feel bad about the outcomes. Let's say, you know, let's change that and reframe it into just saying, well, I created this outcome, what did I learn from it? And immediately there, what you've done is actually sort of detached yourself from a big emotional negative charge around what you have judged to be failure. Now, the cliched uh, case in point here is Edison, who famously said, you know, it took him 10,000 different experiments to learn how to discover the light bulb. And he said, I, you know, people said, well, you failed 10,000 times before you actually got the, the actual discovery of the light bulb and, and learned how to make it work effectively. He said, no, on the contrary, I found 10,000 ways for it not to work. And he saw failure, if you like, as simply a series of outcomes that allowed him to get to where he needed to be. Uh, now, some people say that he stole the idea from Nikola Tesla anyway, but that's a conversation for another time. When you look at a little baby as it's struggling to walk, it doesn't blame itself when it falls down and say, well, I failed, what kind of person am I? It doesn't form a support group. It doesn't go on the internet and create a Facebook page about people who haven't managed to learn to walk. It just gets on with it. It'll bounce off things, it'll fall over, it'll hurt itself, it'll cry. But within a few months, it'll be up bombing around all over the show, zooming in to this and that and having fun. And it will have achieved its objectives. It's innate in its nature to kind of just for that 
desire to walk to manifest and nature will ensure that that child will walk. So don't judge yourself unduly harshly or ideally don't judge yourself and others at all when we make mistakes, when things don't come out the way that we want them to do. And if you think about it, we're usually coming at things from the point of view of our own ego. Our ego is attached to certain outcomes that we feel that we deserve, but they may not be the best for us. And so whatever happens, detach from the outcome, see it as a learning experience, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and move on. That doesn't mean that you have no discrimination about what can be learnt from certain situations where perhaps things should have been done differently. It just simply means that you say, well, I can see what I did there that could be more effectively done a different way next time. And you just pick yourself up, give yourself a hug, move on, and do better next time. And you know what? If you feel next time, that's fine. Repeat the process. Eventually, you will get to that point of being able to walk and then to run and then to hurdle. It's just the natural order of how we progress and learn. Read. Read, 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 read. Reading is going to the gym for your mind. You imagine things, you interpret things, you go off on an adventure, you expand your vocabulary, you experience new ways of imagining the world and feeling about the world, you gain new insights. It's absolutely wonderful. And of course, as a creative person, as a creative visionary, you cannot not direct whenever you're reading a book. You know, we've all had that experience of going to see a film and kind of going, nah, the book was better. You know why? Because when you read the book, you directed it, you cast it, and you starred in it. It doesn't get much better than that. So read plenty and read widely. So often you'll hear people say, or you may have said yourself, I'd love to be more creative, but then we refuse to get outside of our comfort zones. If we don't push outside of what is comfortable and normal and pleasing to us, we'll never grow as human beings, either intellectually or physically or artistically or spiritually. We need to be in that position where we're growing outside of what uh, we're used to effectively. Okay, that doesn't mean we have to have an attitude of anything goes, but simply that we're prepared to look at things and consider things that are outside our normal view. Let's take diet as an example. You wanna be a chef? Guess what? You're going to have to develop your palate so that it's attuned to more than just ketchup, okay, and ice cream. You may have to try, let's say, Asian food. I don't like spicy food. You know what? Try it. Try it. What's the worst that can happen, okay, outside of having an allergy? What's the worst that can happen? You'll just try something and decide, yeah, I'm not too keen on it. But you might go, hey, what's that wonderful flavor? Well, that's coriander. What's the other spicy, tangy thing? Oh, that's the lime that's mixed in with the coconut milk and the chili. This is fantastic. And suddenly you've opened up a whole new area of uh, skill and pleasure and fun uh, that you never knew that you had. And then you start to feel really good about yourself because that's the way we're designed. Whenever we're growing, we feel good, we feel fulfilled, we feel expansive and positive. And whenever we're not, ful ful when whenever we're not fulfilling our potential, we tend to feel a bit mm, down on ourselves, a bit kind of maybe stale would be a good word. So again, we're programmed to feel good when we're growing. Um, so if we take that, that, that idea of diet, let's apply that then to filmmaking. If your thing is Polish art movies, good for you. Why not try watching some blockbuster uh, disaster movies that were made in America in the 70s? If your thing is blockbuster disaster movies from the 70s, why not try watching some Scandinavian movies made in the 50s, okay? watch things that you wouldn't normally choose to watch and the worst that can happen is you're going to see new ways of doing things you don't have to like everything that people say you should like because it's a great film but in the process of just exposing yourself to different new stimuli you're going to find new ideas new techniques new shots new approaches kind of sinking into your uh, filmmaking psyche and that can only be a good thing. Think of it again going back to the metaphor of um, cooking. You now have a big cupboard that's instead of having two ingredients in it, your creative cupboard now has 30, 40 ingredients from all around the world because you studied films from Russia, you've looked at French New Wave films, you've looked at Italian neorealism, you've looked at Hollywood musicals, you've looked at war movies, you've looked at science fiction space opera. 
you have looked at horror movies from the from Italy in the 70s okay a whole bunch of stuff from which we can learn you don't have to like it all but try and push yourself outside the comfort zone and grow artistically here's a massively powerful way to hugely impact your creativity tune into beautiful music tune into the music that excites you uh, energizes you moves you uh, puts you into a reverie whatever but tune into your music there's certain types of classical music uh, baroque music in particular is known to put your mind into an alpha state uh, so if you listen to baroque music for about an hour your mind will start to go into a very contemplative peaceful uh, relaxed state very very conducive to uh, fantasy daydream inspiration and so on and really that's the kind of place we want to be at where we're relaxed feeling good no particular agendas and that's where our own creativity uh, just sort of starts to flow in a very natural way whenever you feel good whenever you're particularly responding to music the body wants to dance and uh, again drawing on sacred traditions dance has been used to put people into warlike states to put them into mating states or you know sexual uh, erotic states it's been used to put them into sacred states and so if you think about the range of, of powerful states that uh, dance can put you into especially when coupled with music and especially drumming you know you can really powerfully change your state very rapidly just by putting on your headphones maybe going for a run out in nature and you will massively change your physiological uh, state your brain chemistry and you will start to open up really wonderful uh, positive states of being Okay, a couple of little practical things to enhance our creativity. Keep a creative journal. This can be really, really helpful. A notebook or a scrapbook where you jot down sketches. Uh, here's a lovely establishing shot. You see something when you're walking down the road. Take a little fit picture on your, on your camera. Bop it into your scrapbook. Now this scrapbook, this scrapbook can be uh, a physical paper one or it can be something like a scratch disc that you can keep on your computer um, or your phone or something like that where you've got a big resource of lovely ideas, images, bits of overheard conversation, photographs, inspirations, anything at all that floats your boat that gives you a little bit of a spark or that you think wow you know what that's a lovely image or that's a lovely sound this could be used effectively in something later it's not about judging it trying to place it into a three-act structure anything of that nature it's just gathering up wonderful things that really resonate with you and then you have a storehouse of potential uh, inspiration that you can draw upon uh, you've got a, a storehouse of wonderful images that um, are the foundation of your discipline you're an image maker a moving image maker so uh, build up a resource build up a kind of bank account of inspirational ideas images thoughts stories and keep them somewhere where you can dip into them anytime that you wish ideally keep them private they're not there to please other people they're not there to be judged or marked they're there as a big treasure trove of goodies for you to dip into and have fun with as and when you wish or need to here's another one keep a dream journal now I used to do this and in the end I ended up having to stop because I was filling up five or six pages of A4 every day and it was taking about an hour just to kind of recount a lot of dreams now on the one hand you can say well look that's incredibly indulgent and so it is on the other hand you can say it's a very worthwhile discipline because what you're actually doing is committing yourself to exploring your inner psychological landscape the particular symbols the particular journeys that you go on and you can probably be very very well aware of many dreams that have outstandingly impactful images uh, from from your own life dreams are about as private and personal as you can get it's your soul your psyche your mind reflecting back to you exploring back to you expressing um, and, and adventuring the images and journeys of your life so you're going to gain a fair amount of knowledge about your own inner world uh, and it will also give you this kind of wonderful resource to complement your creative scrapbook in terms of uh, being able to find really interesting story ideas, images and in particular symbols. 
If you're really serious about enhancing your creativity, getting films made, really developing your skill set, cut out the things that you know are wasting your time. For me, it was video games. I really enjoy video games and I still play them. But there was a period in my life where they were just I was just doing too much of it and I recognized it eventually and I sort of said to myself, look, let's invest that time in learning new software, learning new skills for my filmmaking and essentially for my post-production skills in particular. So I set aside the video games for six months or a year or whatever it was and in that time I learnt a whole new range of skills that have since really been my bread and butter, been my livelihood and brought me on into new professional relationships and new personal ones because of the friends that I've made out working uh, on freelance gigs and in post-production. So a whole new world has opened up to me, a whole new income stream, a whole new skill set, a whole new kind of flourishing in my life because I set aside something that was, you know, great fun but wasn't really giving me any return in the investment of time that I was putting into it other than just having a bit of fun. So invest your time wisely. Uh, invest it into things that are going to give you and your loved ones and those around you and hopefully your audience a higher return than you're actually putting in. When we laugh and when we have fun we're very, very relaxed and we're very much in the flow of goodness and well-being. And that's where we want to be in terms of being creative. Again, going back to the children, you know, as Jesus said, behold the child. There he was with all the disciples, all the mystics, uh, all sitting around pontificating about chakras and sin and redemption and are you the Messiah and all this complex heavy duty stuff. And Jesus just points to the little child and says, look, you want to be enlightened? Be like the child. So over there in the moment, immersed in the pleasure of just simply being alive without agendas. And doesn't that resonate with what we've talked about in terms of where we want to be at as an actor and as a director in the moment playing with the scene in a lovely creative immersion so relax have fun and the best way to do that often is to have done your homework I bet that kid that Jesus saw had done his homework and he was out just having fun with nothing hanging over him do your prep chill out finally and perhaps most importantly, if th this is the only thing you ever took away from $50 film school, I would be very pleased. Never ever let anyone tell you that you're not creative, especially yourself, okay? Anyone that says that doesn't know the first thing about their own true nature or you. So remember, every great spiritual tradition uh, from around the planet, going back thousands of years, acknowledges that at the core of who we are, is a creative essence and that everything we think, say and do has a creative repercussion for good or for bad. Uh, so nobody can ever legitimately tell you that you're not creative. How you enhance that creativity, how you use it is your adventure and it's up to you. So what really is exciting is to say well how am I going to marry the technique that I have learned uh, perhaps in this course and in others with uh, polishing up my own creativity, my own way of seeing the world, my own way of interacting with my fellow human beings, and what amazing things are we going to create together in the world of film when technique and creativity come together. <laughs>